Good day everybody. Oh, what a day I'm having, but I'm very tired. So, Hub, what do you think I should do to continue performing whilst being tired? Well, you should do exactly what you're doing in the days when you're not tired, and that is keep performing. Oh, yeah? Regardless of whether you're tired, exhausted, fatigued, yeah. or just under pressure, you yeah. should keep performing, because when you stop performing, then the tidal wave will hit. You'll be left behind. You gotta hustle. You gotta keep going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So oftentimes, uh, actually, you have uh, time uh, on your hands in order to prepare yourself for those uh, periods of intense work or some sort of other activity, whatever it might be. So what I decided to do, uh, since I wanted, let's say, to train more, for example, and to do uh, more different projects, uh, I was gradually ramping up the amount of uh, work that I do uh, from week to week. For example, one week maybe it's going to be just uh, one day when I have two training sessions. Then next week it's going to be uh, two days when I have two training sessions. Or uh, I was talking to another friend of mine with whom we train triathlon. So then he recommended that uh, I can add, for example, 0.5 miles uh, to my training, to my running regiment uh, uh, every or regimen, uh, regimen every week, right? So I kind of one week I do two miles, then the week next week is going to be two and a half miles. So and then I kind of uh, get used to that uh, intense uh, work that uh, by default um, makes me tired. But since I gradually uh, ramped up the intensity of the work and the volume uh, of work, then uh, I became okay with that. And actually it's uh, not so bad from just uh, the point of view of doing that amount of work. Exactly. If you continuously push and push a little bit further, you will feel improvement. Like same as building muscle. You yes. know, for a while, benching at 20 kilo bar will feel heavy, but then you just keep doing that over and over again. The next thing you know, 20 kilos is going to be very light. And, you know, but here's the thing, you know, sometimes in life, we voluntarily put ourselves through stress. Like, let's say, whether that's the gym, whether that's trying to pursue uh, an academic or business goal. But sometimes we do have these moments where it's involuntary, where life kind of slaps us or punches us in the face and we're given a wake-up call whether it's either hey sink or swim and an example and a story i think that i have mentioned previously before but to me it's such a powerful story that to this day i keep thinking about it over and over again whenever i'm in these moments and that's the day in my sophomore year of college like when was that six seven years ago maybe and to that day, I remember receiving an email from one of the academic advisors saying, hey, we need to discuss uh, your performance. So here I am thinking, oh, no, it's going to be nothing, just a quick chit chat. I remember walking in there and leaving the meeting, still not processing the words I've heard, which is if you do not straighten yourself out and get all A's this semester, then you will fail out of college. Wow, that is and, pretty intense. Mm -hmm. And that moment, like I got struck with a pretty much a, oh no moment. Like I was still shocked processing, you know, here I am in all of my class uh, with nothing but C's and D's. Wow. How am I going to get to an A? Exactly. And especially how am I gonna cram an entire semester worth of work into one week? right before finals and to me that was terrifying like i remember the first thing i did i called my mom saying like i don't know what to do this is i'm scared right now uh what can i do i remember she just told me well what you're supposed to do which is go study yeah <laughs> so now here i am in this defensive state of mind because it feels like I'm being attacked from all corners. Like I have this class I'm not performing well in. This class is a D, this class is a C. So now I have no clue what to do. So I'm just going to the library, picking up the book, starting from chapter one. Yes. But the whole time while reading, 
it literally felt like I had this huge weight on my back and it was consistently saying, you know, if you don't make this, you might possibly mess up your future. Oh, and yeah. then I kept having these thoughts and I was getting really defensive, not knowing what to do. I felt yeah. like, you know, I was hunkered down in the trenches and nowhere to go. I don't like put my head up or just get shot. So now I remember from that moment, it would just be so many late nights at the library and like the exhaustion started to pick up. Yeah. The tiredness, the less sleep than usual, the less stress relief activities such as like uh, at the time I was big into video games so it was like less and less time you can feel the withdrawal from those moments yes and from there you, the exhaustion and the pressure is building up kind of like a steam valve when you yeah. see the gauge reaching over and over to the red zone like that's where I felt like I was consistently you know in the steam pipes when you feel like the hissing the pipes about to burst or the tea kettles about to blow up from all that pressure cooked in. Exactly. Yeah, that was maybe one of the few times in my life at that point early on where I've gone through like extreme stress like that. Like I was, you go from very lazy to very carefree to now yes. I have to make this through. And so when you see odds like that, you have to pick the most important thing and you have to get it done. But it sounds easier said than done because for me, the most important thing was five classes altogether. Exactly. Yeah, what I want to uh, kind of like build uh, up on this uh, thinking about the pressure of the time actually that we have for this uh, episode, speaking of uh, tired, tired situations and performing on a tiredness, uh, especially when you are pressed for time, just like uh, you are talking about, so uh, what you need to think about is imagine that you are maybe uh, on the sinking ship actually, right? Or uh, mm -hmm. some sort of, let's say, uh, I don't know, like vehicle on fire, right? And you still need to get to the destination before it blows up uh, or before the ship sinks. Something like that, right? So uh, what's important to th think about here, so oftentimes we are not in situations that extreme, right? Uh, on a uh, week by week basis. But yeah, we oftentimes do have like very uh, busy, very overwhelming uh, weeks uh, in which we can uh, be easily uh, tired because of the uh, sheer number of activities that we have to do. Uh, but we still need to get through those activities, meet particular deadlines, right? Speaking about the kind of like analog um, for like explosion of the like, car on fire, right? From which you need to get out. So you have a deadline, right? So which you need to meet. Maybe it's going to be like by like Friday 5 p.m. and not later than that. So what's important also, I figured in my case was to uh, recover properly in the interim, right? So for example, when you go through some sort of intense uh, week, for instance, uh, and you have all those things to do, all the goals to achieve, all the deadlines to meet, uh, then you need to think about the recovery in the interim. Yes, maybe it's going to be not so much of the sleep as you just mentioned, Wahab, but at the same time, for example, you uh, can think about hydration, right? So hydrate yourself properly. So that is thankfully available by and large, or you can think about uh, some sort of healthy snack, right? Instead of the unhealthy one that you can consume and then this will like, help you uh, recover uh, on a kind of like a momentary basis, uh, so to speak, right? Right away, right at this point, at this particular kind of like hour or like uh, period of the day when you have the intense bout of uh, work. So recovery uh, helps a lot. Uh, even if, yeah, so you cannot kind of like uh, do like a proper recovery, maybe that you cannot sleep for like eight hours or something like that, but you can still uh, pay attention to other forms of recovery and then you'll still be able to kind of push yourself uh, through this period of work and get things done. So that kind of actually was working uh, very magical uh, results in my case. Man, it's, it's a crazy thing to like relive and try to describe it because for me especially in these stressful moments especially when you're tired 
like many people think that there is this magic recipe where you click it, you will no longer be tired or you will yes. no longer be under pressure. But the trick is that is going to be there. And for me, one of the biggest things that did help me shift the tide of battle, I guess you could say, oh, yeah. was going from a defensive stance to an offensive stance. The problem with defensive yes. is that if you hold it too long, it's going to crack. It's You're going to get breaches, going to go through... It's just not sustainable. You need to be yeah. attacking. And to me, at the beginning, when I first started out, it felt like defensive. It felt like I need to cover as much ground as possible. I need to look and focus on as many areas rather than dividing and conquering. Dividing and conquering is offensive. To me, yeah. it was like, okay, what can I pick up easily? What am I struggling in? What are the weaknesses? What are the strengths? Like, And be honest with yourself. Because at first, you know, it's very easy to sit in class and go, oh, yeah, I just picked up this lecture and I instantly understood it. That is not the case. Like, oh, yeah. and then when you go and you try over and over again, you really see where you're lacking. In. And especially when, you know, it could be your job, it could be just life in general. Yeah. Too much stress and like trying to focus on so many things you are going to get scattered so that's why the thing is you, you need to develop um like what bruce lee said he said i go something like this the dangerous warrior is an average man but with laser-like focus yeah you need to just have such preciseness in what you select and that goes from everything down to the last minute detail in the way you act and what you absorb and what you express like for me thinking about oh no i have five classes i'm flunking in i can't do this oh no i have hundreds of pages so many powerpoints so many assignments that's it it's game over if i thought about that from the beginning would never have made it would just have stressed my way into failure yes but that thinking long run like we do say it's good to plan and think long run but in these scenarios you cannot be too much in the long run you need to keep mental focus in the here and now you need to yes. look conquer divide everything up into sections or categories whatever you want to keep it in focus on what you can achieve and then for me just here and then the tiredness was here the pressure was here but it wasn't as loud as it used to be. Yes. And I remember, like, from then it just went day after day. And I kept telling myself, I have to do this. It wasn't a, oh, no, how am I going to do this? It was, I have to, I must do this. Exactly. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, I would also add that uh, we have a big mental component uh, to uh, this kind of situation. Uh, when we need to deal uh, with something, right, and then we are tired. So what I think about is that you need to be strategic about what you do, just like you say, well, uh, yeah, you need to be focused, right, and then focus on something that kind of is really important at the moment and uh, cut out other things. So yeah, for example, uh, I think about uh, this situation as uh, managing my uh, mental energy as well as kind of the physical energy which kind of come together oftentimes. For instance, let's say if I don't have to do groceries uh, when I have a, a very busy day then I will skip doing groceries, right? Or if I don't have to talk to somebody then I will skip doing that because this way I will not have to spend my mental energy on talking to a particular person, right? And then I will also not have to uh, spend my uh, like muscle uh, energy uh, that is engaged when I uh, speak, right? So because when we speak, uh, we do make some muscles in our body uh, tense. So yeah, uh, it kind of like uh, can be encapsulated into the words pace yourself. Uh, essentially when you have a, a busy uh, day or a busy week, right? And then you can reduce the number of activities maybe from let's say 100 to 87. That's already some sort of conservation of your uh, mental and physical energy and then you can kind of like focus yourself on those let's say 87 activities that do really matter and then the other 13 activities can be cut out for this particular uh, period of time 
and then you can return to them uh, later. So when it's kind of like uh, gonna be uh, more, let's say, suitable uh, to deal with those uh, less important activities uh, at the moment. So yeah, and then another thing that I was uh, kind of like doing uh, lately is uh, putting myself into the um, kind of uh, suitable uh, or good headspace, uh, so to speak, right? So that could be achieved via meditation. Meditation is very helpful uh, at those uh, tough uh, times uh, during the week, right? When you have a lot to do. Uh, or you can maybe think about uh, how you put yourself into some sort of happy uh, space. Uh, so to speak, right? So you can imagine that you are, let's say, in the uh, happy space just by the sheer power of your mind. So that's what kind of like was helpful for me. So when I have no other external motivation around me, I'm like, okay, I'm going to rely on my own mind. And I say to myself, okay, well, let's imagine that despite all this rain and then difficulties and then tight schedule and uh, dance day and so on, I'll just put myself into the happy space forcefully and I say to myself well in fact this situation is good because I am doing good work for example which is going to be helpful for the community which is going to be helpful for, for me which is going to be helpful for career development uh, that's going to be helpful for my uh, work goals for my training uh, goals uh, and so on and then you can actually generate this uh, happy space from within yourself uh, no wonder there is saying that uh, says something like uh, everything is in within. Actually, I remember that it was on the John Wick's uh, three uh, movie coin. As a matter of fact, everything is from within, and you know, honestly, that that happy space mentality helped me to pushing through these moments of like extreme stress. And the thing is like thinking, oh no, what if I fail? What if I flunk out? What if I missed my only opportunity, you know, to go to a new country, to go study, to go in a new environment? Like to me, it was, oh no, I've completely wasted this opportunity. But then I was th also thinking in these short moments while studying 3 a.m., just completely hating everything, just thinking, well, imagine what happens if I made it. Yeah. Imagine the extreme joy. Oh yeah. Excuse me. I would feel, and to me that was the light at the end of the tunnel, and that is what happened eventually. Thankfully, thank God that I was able to pass. You know, these professors were so merciful and great. Yeah. Like everything, thankfully, seemed to work out. Like looking in hindsight. Exactly. And it will eventually. You know. It's, it's very easy to say, like, oh, it's very dark in this tunnel, but you just keep yes. stepping forward. There's going to be a light at the end of that tunnel. Yeah. Understand that there will be stressful moments. Sometimes it might be a surprise attack. We never would have anticipated it. We never would have seen it coming. But that's fine. That's going to happen. That's the way life works. You know, not everything to the last second or minute is going to be planned. Go with it. Don't give up. Embrace it. But don't keep it as a friend. Life is going to have these moments where it's going to give us a complete surprise attack. It's okay. Embrace the stress and pressure, but don't keep it as a friend. Most importantly, never ever give up. Ramp up the intensity, because you will encounter intense periods of your life when you are tired. Maybe it's going to be several weeks in a row, maybe several weeks throughout the year and then you'll still be able to perform if you ramp up the intensity of things that you do in general before the real tiresome situation arrives. Put yourself in a good mental space. Mental space, mental support will do wonders to your performance. That's according to BJ Penn, so thank you, champion, for that. So this piece of advice worked out in a wonderful fashion uh, in my case as well. Thanks for tuning in.